Hi, I'm Rory Green from XR Today, bringing you the latest news and conversation from the extended reality space. Today, we'll be discussing the current state of enterprise grade AR products and forecasts for the coming years. And joining me to explore this topic today are the co founders of Gravity Jack, Jen and Luke Ritchie. Um, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Thank oh, you, thanks Rory. For having thanks for having us. us. Yeah, it's awesome. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So why don't you start off this, uh, or why don't we start off this conversation, excuse me, with a little bit of a history behind Gravity Jack for perhaps those who don't know. What are your products, aims, um, and then give us a little bit of history about the timeline you've experienced. Yes, yeah, so Gravity Jack was founded in 2009 on the basis of AR. So a little bit of context for people out there. The App Store came out in 2008. So basically, since you can be doing AR, Gravity Jack has been in the space. We have a number of issued U.S. patents in the space as well. Again, just kind of speaking into that longevity. And we've had a very wide breadth of clients. We've worked with, you know, major brands like the Samsungs and the Toyotas, Fords, Kraft, Oscar Mayer. We've also done Department of Defense contracts um, as well, especially leveraging in the CV computer vision realm of things. Um, so I feel like it's so many verticals across the spanning uh, all of the industries. And speaking especially to enterprise, it's been fascinating to watch that uh, evolve, both you know supply and demand, but also the appetite for it and and the willingness to adopt, you know, AR, VR into their strategies. Yeah, a quick story on that. We've, we've been at the AWE since like the very first one. I remember it was just like a few people. I, I don't think it was even more than 50 people at first. Uh, and Unity was there, like the founders, they were starting up their, their booth and, you know, talking about mobile. And uh, it's just it's just fascinating. I remember being at a, a CES and they they dedicated a pavilion to AR. And I was like, oh, okay. We're not as crazy as we thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And, you know, with the optics of events such like that, saying go from a room of 50 to, you know, God knows how many now, um, it's interesting to take from that history. What have you learned about delivering AR solutions? You mentioned adoption rates. How has that changed over these past few years? Whether that be at um, an event level, you know, in, engaging with people face to face, or even dealing with some of those large clients that you just mentioned. Yeah, I can take the first stab at that. You know, it's one of the things over the years that I, we have tried to encourage different clients, but especially in the enterprise realm, is to be proactive in these technologies, not reactive. And unfortunately, they are much more reactive than any of us would like. Um, you know, they in the in the beginning years, it was very much evangelizing. Right. You're you're not only telling people about this new technology, but you're you're telling them about a need that they didn't have, that this new technology should fill and they should pay for it out of budgets that don't even know this technology exists. So it was <laughs> it was it was an art early on. But, you know, starting to talk them through and especially in enterprise, it is a little bit of a um, I don't want to say a long game, but but a little bit. Right. Because they're having to change their internal thought processes. How do we want to shift in our learning, in our training, in our maintenance, in our prayer, in our uh, repairs? You know, so that they have these old school methods that are it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> and it's like, well, it is a little broke though, because it's inefficient. And so it's, it's watching them start to understand and appreciate that, okay, these net new technologies actually can make us more efficient. And so I feel like the next major step, some have taken it, but the next step for other companies and brands and organizations is to is to take action on that understanding. Okay, these new technologies are the future. They're going to make us efficient it's time to go, it's time to adopt. I do think too, there's this world coming where the content creation is the expensive part right now. So you've, you've got, you know, a subject matter expert comes to an agency like Gravity Jack. Um, Gravity Jack then, you know, takes the subject matter expert and puts that stuff down into AR that can be consumed by an end user. I think anytime we add user generated content into that workflow, that's where the game really starts to change. Uh, and we always knew, like when we outlined the whole event uh, timeline, the timeline was actually incorrect in how much time, but completely correct on what and when. Uh, we knew that uh, 
you know, there would be this world where you can actually start to give the subject matter expert the, the capability to actually create the content. And that's where really things are starting to change. And the consumer market's actually going to help drive that. The user generation generated content from that is going to actually help drive the industrial um, over time. And something I'm really interested within that as well is alongside delivering AR solutions and, and adopt or hardware, excuse me, and driving those adoption rates, you mentioned the content creation platforms and that avenue too. Increasingly, we're seeing those avenues become easier, whether that be through third party dedicated or in-house um, software development kits, no code, low code, etc. Um, but how important is it from your perspective and from the perspective of enterprise grade immersive technology, is it to drive those talent pools forward, whether that be at a developmental level or Jen, a little bit more to your point, perhaps within the actual XR champions within, um, within a business, the decision makers, thought leaders within a business, pushing the technology forward. And again, those on the developmental side, how, how important is it to drive that talent pool? Crazy important. <laughs> uh, I mean, for many reasons, not just for the actual creation of said tools and needs, but also for the, frankly, the evangelizing still, you know, so to have these, these innovators and these developers to be able to um, kind of say the same things collectively, not that just the three of us are saying, but that we really know deep down, right? We know that these needs are there, that these needs to be needs need to be fulfilled. Um, so having these these groups, you know, pushing that forward, if you will, is so critical. And I think we watched that before um, in more of the marketing kind of side where that really was the initial phases of the ARVR, if you will. And you had those people within who were in part of the innovation group. Or, you know, a lot of times that ended up being where budgets got pulled from to initiate these executions. And I think that the same thing is going to ring true. Also being willing to adapt and pivot, though, even as those executors and developers for these platforms and within the organizations, because it, we really need to 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 we have a, a kind of a, a spoken slash unspoken check your egos at the door rule here at Gravity Jack. Just because we think something is awesome or cool or should happen doesn't mean a the client thinks that or b the user. Because we who were, were entrenched in these technologies and we're like, oh, this is the way that it should go. But frankly, the end users are are the, the, the golden ticket, if you will. However, they want to or need to see these executions roll out. We have to be cognizant of that and we have to be able to pivot and really give them or cater to that so that they will adopt it, so that they will use it, so that they will promote it and ask for it. Those would be my really, two cents. Really insightful. Luke, <laughs> have you any thoughts on the development side of it as well, perhaps driving those development talent pools? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I think of it in just in terms of what's been holding us back. Uh, I always, I'm always looking towards the future, Jen, make sure the company makes money. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I agree with everything she said. This is, that's just a fantastic uh, synopsis. I would say the other thing, uh, that's about to change is the field of view. And because, you know, just going to user interface and adoption from those users, it doesn't feel natural to look through a postage stamp uh, or, you know, even a postcard, you know, when we start increasing field of view, I need a field of view that matches my eyesight. That's why I think the AVP Apple Vision Pro is, is pivotal even for enterprise as we move into this next phase, it's gonna be wild. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it'll be easier for the evangelists in the companies to get something done because you're going to pop this on your CEO and they're going to be like, oh, and now they look at the study where you cut, you know, a thousand percent time, you know, in some procedure. They're like, okay, let's do it. And how do you feel like that's going to affect the supply and demand? Or how is that affecting perhaps supply and demand now? And how do you see that affecting supply and demand in the, in the future? Just the more, just the higher you understand, the sorry, the increased understanding of these technologies by those consumer use cases just slowly bleed, bleeding into enterprise? I, I think that we're, the human nature of us is you have to see it to believe it a little bit. And, you know, it's even like there's been many, we've been had the, we've been blessed to be able to speak at a number of different tech conferences. And when you start opening up the minds of what is possible, 
even on a small scale, you know, you could do this in this vertical and this in this vertical and you start explaining it. You literally watch the eyes open and many, many times they're raising hands, they're asking questions at the, at the end and they're like, oh, you've just gotten my mind spinning. I feel like hundreds of times I've mm -hmm. heard something of that yep. nature where it starts saying. Or I can't so sleep. Can, I can't sleep thinking yeah. about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thinking of all the things you said. So I think that as they start seeing consumer executions, then they start taking it into their role in their workplace. And, oh, my gosh, we can do this, 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 this. And I think it's going to open up a lot um, of avenues. A lot of things perhaps us here wouldn't have even come up with. I don't. It's a lot like uh, the lithium, you know, uh, ion battery supply problem. I think supply or demand is going to be so heavy uh, that we won't be able to keep up. I mean, you're, we're going to have to just, like, innovate, innovate, innovate. Um, the convergence of AI with AR, that whole piece that we actually kind of saw coming, but I don't think really anybody fully realized the power of generative and what that, the possibilities for that. Um, yeah, this, it, it's transcendent for humanity what's about to happen because we've been computing in with a Z axis since we were born. And now we're about to do that again, but with digital content, you know, that's coming from all different sources. Uh, Fantastic. And just to take it a couple of steps back to a couple of points you've already brought up for a final couple of questions. Um, firstly, I'm quite interested in you with your background of different vertical um, end users. We can't go over every vertical or every use case, you know, it's too many to go by. Um, but you're talking about the idea of assistive or technology to enhance traditional methods. But then also you're talking about the idea of leave, leaving the ego at the door and approaching a project that actually needs XR when that where that'd be beneficial because in turn obviously that helps the industry as a whole more success stories more successful pilots etc but as a whole on, on generally how does the, how do different vertical markets affect your approach to an individual client whether that's be say in repair and maintenance or aviation etc how does um, a specific vertical affect your approach I don't know if it would be a, a specific vertical affecting our approach. I actually would flip that on its heel and say that our approaches affect the vertical, <laughs> primarily because of the clients that we work with and the clients that come to us. That yes, they may be in, in an aeronautics vertical, right? But their problem that they are trying to solve is very specific. So say learning and training within a cockpit of an airplane. Right. So I wouldn't I, that is a that is how do we um, enhance that specific need uh, for that for that vertical, which would be aeronautics. And that's one that we've we've kind of approached and looked at and tried to tackle. And so for ours, they're very um, even within organization, it's the whole right hand doesn't talk to the left. Still very much true today, you know, even in the government, this arm of the government doesn't talk to this. We created an, a, an execution of the Department of Defense that none of the other branches knew about and you're like, huh, so inefficient. But, you know, so for us, it's the, it's the need within the vertical that these executions focus on. And I, I truly believe they will start to build and flourish within because somebody else will say, oh my gosh, let's use that aeronautical one. They're doing that in the cockpit. We can do that for the wings, you know, the internal components of the wings and how we can go through and be teaching and training and learning because that's a different you know, the, the pilot is the one inside of the cockpit learning about that environment where you have the mechanics and the engineers who are learning about the, the intricacies of the mechanics within the wings. So they're two very different. However, it spark the ideas within the vertical on how they can leverage the technologies. Yeah, I'd agree with all that. I think uh, a lot of times, too, we're di differentiating. They might come to us with VR and we're going to say, hey, AR is more appropriate here. Uh, and then also vice versa. Um, now, learning and training specifically is super interesting because the way we process something when I'm watching it in 2D, like you actually see a specific brain pattern. When I add a Z-axis, I actually see the same brain pattern as if everything in that space was actually there. Um, and you and you store it and you spatially and you actually process it the same emotionally. So uh, from medicine to the, the medical vertical, everything, when you, as soon as you add a Z-axis, it, it gets really interesting. And a lot of people don't know that. They're like, well, we just want to pop up a video uh, and hopefully, you know, and, and get that VR increase in training retention. That's not actually going to happen. We need that 
content actually to be in the Cartesian space also. Um, so we're, we're still doing some evangelizing in the sense that people know what AR and VR is now. And, but now we're saying here's the best use to actually get the value uh, transfer that we're shooting for. Fantastic. I really appreciate those answers. They were really insightful. And just before I ask my final question, I think it's very you know important to highlight really the maturity and really the experience that is naturally coming from your answers. I think there's a lot to learn from this and you clearly have a really nice background on the industry. So thank you so much for your thoughts. And just based on a couple of points you brought up, Luke, the um, Apple Vision Pro and Generative AI are both having and then will have a subsequent massive effect, massive effect excuse me on the arvr mr market talking on forecasts what does what is what are your oh, excuse me what are both of your xr market forecasts excuse me for the next coming years um i think it's fair to say a lot of people in the industry are saying we're reaching um, a tipping point or a real moment of change in the industry what are your forecasts guys I, I'll go first so uh, Jen can disagree with mine. So if I had a timeline, she always disagrees with my <laughs> timeline, and she's usually accurate, by the way. In 2009, we actually wrote out the whole list of how everything was going to go, and that's kind of what we decided our patent portfolio. We have been super hyper accurate on that list. Uh, other than the generative AI, we had AGI in there. Um, and we're, we're actually about 2011 per my chart. And 2011 was there would be a home-based HMD with full field of view and high resolution. Uh, and that would also offload part of its compute. Um, my prediction is like now, and then from that marker, because it was a demarcation in the whole timeline, that marker actually things go like this from there uh, because people are going to see the possibilities. And AI generative AI, now even just creating content, it could sit there and watch a bunch of medical videos and now actually produce content. We can have AI producing the AI generated content that users are going to consume. Uh, I mean, there's a whole, I, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I feel like this is 2024 is the marker. And I don't think Apple Vision Pro is perfect, but it has the markers that we, we knew are going to change things. So I predict two years, like you don't even want to yeah. find. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Jane, what about your thoughts? Uh, I mean, where it's going, here's the thing. We've been doing this for what year is this? 2023. We're 14 years now. And the timing has been fascinating because it's just gone so much. There's two prongs, right? Us as software developers are handicapped and limited by the hardware. Always. We're just, we're always a little stunted by what we can do with what the, the, the hardware can, can provide. Hardware manufacturing, yes, they try to move swiftly, but they also are like, they like tease the rope out to you. You know, they've got their own business models. They've got their own financial strategies. I get it. So they're a little bit of a wild card for us on when they're going to release their physical goodies so that we can, you know, have the power of the software behind it. And then you throw the wild card of the users in and their adoption. Where sometimes you're thinking, yikes, you guys are moving like molasses and they do. So there, there's all of these elements that are, you know, fun question marks in the industry. Now, the whole idea of consumer based AR, though, I think many, many users, you know, we're still got a ways to go. But, uh, you know, we get I'm on calls with people, clients all the time. And many people still haven't used AR in their daily life now. The vast majority, I, I mean, we're up in the 90% now, at least in the you know states and maybe Europe, where when you talk about AR and you say, hey, barfing rainbows or little antlers, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. So they they start to know what it is. So I think the trajectory mm -hmm. of, a, of a user based headset is really going to catapult us. At the same time, we're still in a place where Apple Vision Pro is awesome. Can't wait. Going to be transformative. It still is like. A set of goggles on my head. I'm not going to walk downtown New York City and go on a shopping trip with my girlfriends with goggles on my head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he would. <laughs> you know, so there, we still have this like, we got another leap to do. Um, but what I am very, very, very excited about is the consumer uh, appreciation of AR with the Apple Vision Pro, the in home experiences, and the way that people are going to start looking at these XR technologies as efficiencies in their yes. day to day. That is just going to be this 
catapult into ideation, creation, and desires across the board from users. Because you, you look at how many times the consumer market drives the enterprise market, especially with transformative technologies. Often you have this like uh, consumer adoption that then boom, now it's catapulted into the enterprise, even though the enterprise might have been doing it first. Uh, you know, the personal computer is a perfect example of that. Uh, and the boom that really happened once consumers could buy what businesses had and really saw the power of it in day to day life. I think small timelines. Well, I'm not sure. What... The... Yeah. It's okay. No, go ahead, Ray. All, all I was going to say is I completely agree with you um, both and Luke, what you're saying there about um, consumer adoption driving it too. Smartphones are, I think, another great example. Apple managed mm -hmm. to do an iPhone. You know, those, those were taken away probably by some employers, but now they're vital for communication. Yep. Mm -hmm. exactly. What were you saying the two-year mark was, Luke? What, oh, what I think uh, people are going to want to actually throw away their – their phones they're not going to want tvs in their living rooms uh i mean they're probably um, going to have to keep their phones because you're right there won't be a outdoor version but they're going to want to like the desire is going to be like I, I hate this thing i wish i could just do everything on my av right or whatever glasses my meta tens okay he uh, says two years <laughs> then i say six <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I really appreciate those insights. You know, I think there was a lot to learn there and you really brought a lot of um, tons of great thoughts. So thank you so much. And for those listening, what's the best way for them to learn more about Gravity Jack? What's the best website, social page for them to reach out to? Yeah, so all the socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, we're, we're Gravity Jack. So run a search there. Website is gravityjack.com. Um, we also just launched our first public offering on startengine.com. So it's a Reg CF, a regulation crowdfunding offering. So you can find us at startengine.com slash offering slash Gravity Jack, or just run a search Gravity Jack on the site. Awesome. Brilliant. Thank you so much. That's it from myself. You can get more XR news by subscribing to the XR Today news channel and by following our social pages. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>